Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chen Gu from Xiamen University. I'm glad to stand here again to give you a presentation about my work. I get my master, uh, bench and master degree from Tsinghua University. And I graduated from UCSD, San Diego. And Professor Agami was my committee member. I'm really glad to make my presentation immediately after him. And now I'm currently working on School of Architecture in Xiamen University in China. It's a very beautiful island. Uh, it's on a very beautiful island. If you have a chance to visit China, it's, uh, you, you're really welcome to visit me. Uh, the topic of my presentation is this one seems done work. It works or not? It's it's not a hearing it. It's recording onto the video. Ah, I see. Okay. You can just leave it. Okay. 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 That's fine. Okay. Thank you. And it should be working. Uh, my topic is uh, OpenSea Snoped framework for final element based optimization. Uh, it's my work. Uh, with my collaboration, Professor Joey Conte is my previous advisor in UCSD, uh, Michele Barbato from Louisiana State University, Philip Gill from UCSD, and Frank McKenna. Here is the outline of my presentation. The first part is introduction to OpenSea Snope framework. This is the optimization framework. The second one is application example, then TCL comments, then the last one is how to record record the response and modify the model parameters. Before I begin my presentation, I want to very quickly introduce the uh, open city in China. Uh, as you probably have already known, China government uh, spend a lot of money in the research in civil engineering. We have a major research plan uh, called the Disaster Evolution of Civil Infrastructure Under Strong Earthquake and Wind. DECIFEW. It's from 2008 to 2015, including 30 million US dollars for about 55 projects, plus four China Japan collaboration projects. Each project has 0.5 million and six China US collaboration projects with also the same amount of money each. The project is trying to invest the d damage evolution and collapse mechanism of civil infrastructures under extreme loadings like earthquake or typhoons. The director is Professor O from uh, Dalian University of Technology. And recently, uh, we have another joint project that try to support this uh, major research plan project from 2013 to 2017. Uh, the name is Joint Development of Open Seas and its applications in earthquake-induced disaster, evolution of civil infrastructures. Our purpose is to try to make uh, open seas as one of the main simulation and integration platforms. Because in the previous uh, four years, we already done some good research. We try to integrate the results into the current open seas to further develop it. We have good collaborations uh, with the United States in China side, we have the PI, Professor O from uh, Dalian University of Technology, uh, and others, uh, including me. And in, in US side, we have the PI, Professor Menhen from UC Berkeley, Joey Conte, Frank McKenna, and uh, Gilbert Mosquader from UCSD, Juan from South Carolina. We have formed a pretty strong team. We try to uh, continue work another four or five years to integrate uh, into OpenSea some research product of China. This is the official website, uh, website, of course, this is, everyone knows this. And in this official website, we already integrate some of our research called sensitivity analysis. The menu you can check easily on the wiki of OpenSea's official website. This is user's menu, and this is me and my collaborators. If you're interested, you can check this. Uh, sensitivity. That is a very important step for doing uh, optimization because optimization needs gradient. That is also sensitivity analysis. And I also make another web website in China called archt.xmu.edu.cn. Here I put the 
some new research about sensitivity, reliability, and optimization. If you come to here, I'm sorry, I don't have English version. If you check one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh, you see open seas sensitivity and reliability. Then I put some optimization here. I will put this uh, PPT files into here uh, as soon as I come back to China. So you may download easily maybe next month the current PPT. Now let's begin my presentation. The first part is introduction to OpenSea Snopes framework. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because we have an uh, urgent need for integrating op optimization software in into OpenSea. We want to do the final element based optimization like uh, model updating, calibration, system identification, structure optimization, as well as reliability analysis or reliability based optimization. I think you probably also have some uh, demand for the optimization. You probably can use it in the future research. We have need and challenges. The first need is we try to optimize for different purpose at different levels. The different purpose means we can do it uh, optimized in doing pure structure optimization, model updating, or we can do reliability as well as reliability based optimization for doing different things. We can do at a different level, that means it can be a main program to do p optimization, or it can be called by the reliability or some other algorithms. And uh, the interface needs to be very flexible. That means we hope any input for OpenSea can be used as design variables. Any output from OpenSea can be used in object function or the constraint functions. So in this case, we can optimize anything, basically. We can use anything as design variables. <coughs> the third requirement is we need to integrate the DDM-based sensitivity I just uh, in, uh, mentioned, and also reliability modules into our framework of optimization. We have already, uh, we have already integrated a very good uh, optimization program called Snoped. It's a fortune-based software package for solve large, large scale nonlinear optimization problem developed by Professor Philip Gale and co-workers in uh, UCSD mathematical department. Why we choose Snoped? It was already designed for aerospace, but now we uh, adopt into civil engineering. Th because Snopes is very suitable for large scale applications. It, it computes fast, it needs relatively few ev evaluations of objective functions and constraint functions, as well as their gradient. It's able to tolerate discontinuities. Even the objective function and the constraint function have discontinuities or their gradient very often have discontinuities. Snopes can still find the optimum. It can bypass some point that the final element cannot convert. Uh, like Frank said, in the nonlinear analysis, very often we cannot find the correct solution. We cannot convert, even convert, because of some numerical problems. Also, in this case, we can bypass this point. We can still find the uh, optimum. It's a very robust program. It's very flexible and easy to customers. It's free for academic purpose. Here is the software architecture. Um, I will not go into too much details. This is Snope. We wrapped it into a class. So now Snope just like something your is available. You can use it directly if you want to further use it. Then it need uh, whenever give an update design variable x, it asks users to give object function f and constraint function g. If users can give gradient of f and g is better, but if not, Snoped will compute it automatically. I will not go into the details, but I just want to show it can do optimization, reliability, and reliability-based optimization. Interest user can read my paper about this part. The second part is application examples. Yeah, all these parts are in the, this paper. <coughs> in my 2002 paper, yes, 
Structure, ASC Journal of Structural Engineering. The first example is the uh, application of this optimization into uh, electronic tower. This is about 15 meters, 6 meters by 6 meters. We model it by use truss. Uh, the truss uh, includes the column truss A and the truss B and the horizontal truss C. We, we include three sets of truss. And the top of the building, uh, of the towers, we have the folds. Similarly, the, the wind falls. It's about 30 degrees. Also, the every truss is modeled by the same model. It's a nonlinear, um, bilinear model, smooth bilinear model. The design variable is the area of this A, B, and C truss. We have three design variables. We have only three. Because usually, when you do the nonlinear model updating, there are too many local minimum. If you have too many design variables, very often you go to the only the get only the local minimum. The constraint the, the design variables is A, B, C cross second area. The the constraint function is the total cost. Total cost uh, is also sim equal to the uh, similar with the volume because it's a steel structure. We must satisfy two conditions. The first one is. Uh, when the F is 25 kN, you max must less than 1.5 centimeters. When this F is 25, the maximum displacement at uh, this point must be smaller than 1.5. The second uh, constraint is 100 less than 15 centimeters. We get the optimal design, get the area A, area B, and area C. The total volume is 0 0.27 cubic meters compared to the Original value is 1.2 kilometers. Here shows the pushover curve. <coughs> it's force and deformation, the displacement. Original design is elastic, is blue blue one. Then after 20 iterations of snow, we get this red one. <coughs> then after another 20, we get the final optimum is uh, this black one. From this small figure, we can see the volume Original volume is 1.2 cubic meters. Then after 40 iterations, we get the optimum is here. The volume goes down until 0 0.27 cubic meters. This is show only one example. That example also uh, chosen from the literature. The second example is the nonlinear soil model updating. This soil column we use the multi-use surface you just uh, heard by Professor Agama. Uh, this is soil model, and subject to earthquake, the maximum is one about two meter per square second, maximum acceleration. And if we see the point here, we can it's quite nonlinear. We, we have three layers of soil with different material parameters, uh, but all multi-use surface clay soil. We first uh, compute the true value. Uh, this is a pure numerical example. We have a set of parameters. We first compute the response of U0, U6, U11. Then we start from a different value. We try to find the value by match these three accelerations. We do the model updating. The design variable we have six. The G1, tau 1, G the low strain shear modulus. Tau is the strength, the soil strength. And uh, the true value is this, initial value, and the tau 1, g2, tau 2, g3, tau 3, we give a range. We need the objective function is, and its gradient uh, like this. F is a half of, uh, this is the true experiment, actual exp uh, acceleration. This, no sorry, this is actual experiment, experimental <coughs> acceleration, actual acceleration. This is final element open sys recorded acceleration. We compute at every time step the difference between these two squared <coughs> submission to every time step, then submission to three stations. These three stations, 0, 6, 11. We use this one to, to be an object function. Then we get the, <coughs> we get the gradient of ob object function like this. It's very easy to get. This is sensitivity. Uh, we can compute by final difference, or we can compute uh, use the one 
DDM-based uh, sensitivity analysis I just uh, mentioned. The parameter obtained by SNOP is the true values. So before model updating, it's very different. And after model updating is much perfect. Of course, it's because of its pure numerical uh, example. In reality, we cannot match so well. Then we also notice that if we use forward finding difference, FFD, and the direct difference method that I just mentioned, the, the sensitivity algorithm, the convergence speed is very different. This F is object function. When we use FFD, it's used up need about 90 or maybe 95 steps to convert. But when we use the DDM, it needs only less than 20 steps to convert. DDM is uh, much faster converted than FFD. But this conclusion is not very general. Uh, it's true for some cases. Some other cases, they, they are the same. These two are the same. Then the third application example, I try to uh, show you the structural reliability analysis. This is the reinforced fiber model two bay, two story, and the, the beam and column are modeled by the reinforced fiber section. And this is the cover concrete and the core concrete with steel reinforced bar. Uh, with this complete nonlinear model, we use SNOPED. We define the, uh, we define the object function as the minimum point to the origin, that is the design point. Try to find the design point in reliability. Probably some of you know the reliability it's also an uh, optimization problem. Then we give every random variable a uh, distribution, mean, and co coefficient of variation. We finally get the DP. We get the first order reliability method. The failure probability is 0 0.08181. We can compute and get it well. These three examples appear in my paper I just showed you. And uh, here is a, a pushover curve. At uh, mean point is this red one. At design point, design point, this is, is this blue one. Then the third part of my presentation is about the TCL command. How do we make a command that, that runs the snoped? Uh, in fact, it's quite simple. We uh, design only a few commands. The first one is optimization. In OpenSys, we currently have the domain that includes the structures and the reliability domain that includes all the component of reliabilities. Also this optimization is this includes some other component in, in optimization. Then the second comment we need to know is design variables. We give a name <coughs> one, we give a name here, you see, DVE. The name is this. This name is a variable in TCL memory. As soon as we have this one, we can directly use this one later. As Frank just told you, we can use set DVE equal to something. That's we create a variable. Now we create a variable in another way. Then we give a starting point, lower bound, upper bound. It's very simple. Then the second design variable. Then we try to map this design variable into the some variables in the structures by using design variable positioner. The first positioner we use the design variable one is this one. We map into the element number one material Young's model E. And then we map the second one. So we have one, two, three element, uh, three common that can define the design variable and its position. Then we define the object function and the constraint function. Object function is like this. The common is this is number one, first object function, name is F. The F is computed by using TCL file, F.TCL. Also, it has a low bound and upper bound. These two can, can be ignored. If you don't write it, it's OK. By default, it's from minus infinity to infinity. Then we can give gradient, <coughs> name grade F. Or we, cannot we can choose to give or not give gradient. If giving, we need to compute gradient in this. If not, we just compute F in this file. And then constraint function is the same because this file, uh, this example has two constraint functions. So we define the uh, array. This one I think uh, you already learned. This is an array. The, the first is four, second is five. This is the second array, first <coughs> is minus infinity to infinity. Then we define constraint function number one. 
name is g computed in this file g.tcl upper bound and lower bound and we can choose to give gradient or not finally we can run slope analysis run optimization using this command run slope analysis max step is 50 then uh, the final result is in this file we can print the intermediate result then we here we run we perform analysis in this that means uh, <coughs> we do the analysis then after analysis we check whether we get the minimum if not we do analysis again we check we adjust the parameter then do analysis again analysis is here I will show you example the same example I just presented this example here we have three design variables we give three names DVA, DVB, DVC give a range object function is like this the total volume is DVA multiplied by the length of A that means the total length of truss in the column DVB plus LB plus DVC LC LA, LB, LC are constant the cost function is the same I already explained and analysis is in this file so if we go to the source file we can see this very easily <coughs> this is the main code at the very beginning we you probably cannot see the detail but this is the structure to set up the electronic tower this is nothing different from what we, uh, Frank told you Fra define the node boundary conditions element until here then everything else, everything above here is the same. But after here, we do optimization. This optimization part is the one that we added uh, on the base of what Frank t uh, wrote. We have I copied this file here, so it, it will be larger. Optimization part is the test.tcl. We first define optimization, then we de define design variable one, giving a name, de design variable two, design variable three. Then we use the design variable position to map the design variable with the element. So this is the first set of elements from one to 20. That is the column truss. Then we use design variable one. The second set of parameter from 21 to six, this is a very simple loop in TCL, you, you should be able to answer very easily. I think what Frank said is probably not correct. You can, uh, you can program. As a PhD or master student, you for sure can program in C++ and you can do excellent work. Also, this open seat was developed in when Frank and Max got the, they are doing their PhD, <coughs> not some, something else. Then from 21 to 60, uh, another set of parameter uh, maps the second uh, run variable DVB into another set of element. Then 61 to 30 is horizontal truss. Then object function defined as this. Name is F in this F.tcl. Then, then boundary condition is similar. It's G in G.tcl. Then run slope analysis. We run this, perform this analysis. Every time after we perform this analysis, we compute F and G then give to the slope. Slope will adjust it, then compute this again, then compute F and G to do this iteration until we find the optimum. This is a TCL file to run. It is here. Uh, we use some command in OpenSys. Remove load pattern one. So this pattern one is gone. Then we define pattern one is constant. We give a false. That force is what we just mentioned is, is this force, this force on the top. We give the four forces, then we do analysis one, one step. Then we sim the result, nodal display the 23, first DOF into temp 1A. The, this 23 is the top node that we are concerned. 23, the second degree of freedom with mm, the displacement will start in temp 2A. Then we do the reset. Reset will um, reset the model. It will compute from beginning. Then remove load pattern one. We add another set of faults because we have two constraints. 
Then we do, after we do analysis, we store it in temp 1B and temp 2B, <coughs> the si same displacement. Then in the F dot TCL and the G dot TCL, we compute this F. F is object function. This is a common. This is not will not run. F is L1, A1 plus L2, A2 plus L3. So in fact, in TCL, we write like this. Only one line in the file. If we set F equal to DA, DVA, this is a variable in TCL multiplied by the length A, DVB by length B, DVC by length C. So the total volume of the structures. Then G, we do the same. We, we, I'm sorry, G, we, do, we compute the maximum displacement at the top. It's equal to square root temp 1A square plus temp B 2A square. This is the first G. The second G is temp 1B square plus temp 2B square. So we use a temp uh, temporary variable, these two temporary variables, to store the response of the structures. Then we can directly use it in F and G. Uh, with these three files, you can already run the analysis. You can find the minimum. But if you want to, only if you want to modify the default setting of SNOPES, you can have a lot of choice. We have another file called SNOPES.A.SPC. You, you can change all the tolerance you can change uh, the printout format. You can change the handshake its full memory or, or half memory. You have a lot of choice. We have some other uh, possible choice for users. Then I will give you another example. Sorry, I, I also have not enough time. The other example is nonlinear model updating. This is the BRB model, the buckling re restrained uh, brace system. Then we try to update the, uh, the parameters to get the, a, a good match with the experiment. Then here I want to show you another method to use our code. This is the main code. You see this main file is very short. I also copied it here to, to let you see more clearly. This is the main file. We have the optimization. Then design variable is one, two, three, four, five. That is the uh, sigma yc, the yield, the strength, alpha t, alpha c, delta t, delta c is some parameters for the BRB model. T is tension, C is compression. Object function is like this, compute f in the f dot tcl. Then we run this analysis. It's very simple, so we make everything here. We make all the analysis here. In this file, we don't have any structure analysis. But in the TCL file to run, we have a lot of analysis. We wipe the model, we recreate the model, we do everything. But all these parameters you see here, when we define the BRB model, all these parameters we get from the optimization, snoped. So as soon as snoped changes, it will automatically change this, these variables. All these parameters, uh, four materials, the parameters is obtained from snoped. Also, in this TCL file to run, we need a recorder into display f4.out. Finally, we just uh, try to match f4.out. The matching method in f.tcl, the object function is like this. We try to match the real uh, displacement with the uh, open source computer displacement like this. So we open the standard. The standard means experimental, the true displacement. And we open the between recorded by open seeds. Then we do a simple loop. We compute, compute this difference. The same as before. So in TCL, you can write uh, something very easily. In a few lines, you can do it. Then we close these two files. I, I will not uh, see, show details, but uh, you are able to understand easily if you download my files from a website. The last one is the how to record the response and uh, how to modify model parameters. I think record uh, how long time I have. Okay. I just want to say element recorder because a lot of users complain element recorder is not good enough. The reason is uh, different elements have different recorder, different keywords. And some elements have fiber, some elements have uh, uh, directly linked with material, no fiber sections. How do we do this? We need to go, for me, the, the best way is to go to the source code. We can find this immediately. It's much faster than if you go to the user's manual. 
In fact, we don't have use the manual for this part. So it, how, how to go to the code, if you choose the comp compare this with element, you know, the, you see the, the formal, the official web website, we, we give only this. But uh, after element two, what to record? We don't give the details. And uh, two more myths, sorry. Then with the, this example, we show some uh, how to record it. We just uh, go to the source code. We need to see what element and wha <laughs> what material you're using. We use set response and get response. These two functions are keys that you can know which keyword are available, which keyword are used. Then in this, this example in my website, I use this as example like record element into this file. Element two, we can record global force. We can re record element uh, the second one false. We can record second one with a specific fiber at this location x uh, x zero point twenty two y zero point twenty two. The the material is number three is stress. But how do I do this? How do I know I need to write this kind of keywords? In fact, I go to the 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 code. We use this this beam column two D. In the set response, we know exactly what to write. Computer is very stupid. You have to write exactly the same as here. You don't have other choice. Also, for the fiber section, we know exactly which fiber section. Then we go to its set response. We check. We should write something. That is specified by the fiber section. We, we found false is a, is a good one that can be right. Also, in the specific, specific fiber, we need to go to the material. This is steel, reinforced bar. We, we find stress is a, a qualified keyword. OK, I will not say too much. This is some advanced topic. You, you can extension. You can record anything, not only provided by the programmers. You can also extend by record all the memory variables that you, you needed by extending this very easily. If you go to this website, you just do some simple, like a few lines, you can record something that never exists before. Also, we can modify the model parameters. We can modify any model parameters, what one means. Any, any model parameters by using set parameter and uh, update parameter. Because this command in the official website is also not clear. So if we go to the same example, we set parameter, you see here, parameter one, element three, section two is Young's modulus. When we do update parameter, it will update this into two E8. But how to write this? We need to go to set parameter and update parameter. Only, only set parameter, in fact. We can know how to write this command. Every function has a set parameter. Every material section element has a set parameter function. If you go here, you know how to do it. OK, if you want more information, you just go to my website, architecture.xmu.edu.c. You come to here, open this. I will put more things here. Thank you. <laughs>